So I'd just like to welcome everybody here today for our fifth um, uh, event in our wellbeing care package series. We're just waiting now for um, people to come on board. We'll give them a few more minutes and then we'll start. But for those of you are here, who are here already, welcome. So um, we have with us Yogi Bryan from Arizona, which is very exciting. And what time is it over there, um, Yogi Brian, at the moment? It, it is 3.30 p.m. over 3, here in Arizona. 3.30. Wow. Yeah. Other, On a Tuesday. It's Tuesday. <laughs> uh, just to clarify that. <laughs> Brian said to us, look, we're in the future. <laughs> yeah. We're time travelers over here. <laughs> exactly. And Adrian's joining us from the sunny Gold Coast. Absolutely. Um, so is it a lovely day up there today, Adrian? It's glorious. It's about 27, 28 degrees, I think, today. And the ocean's absolutely beautiful, sun shining, and uh, it is paradise. I actually love being on the Gold Coast. Is it ever not a sunny day up there, which is probably a better question? We, we do have those Queensland storms. And oh. When they come through, they can be pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They make up for it, don't they? They certainly do. Well, I remember we were lucky enough to go on a holiday to Dunk Island, which is very near to up there. And I think that whole resort's been um, in a cyclone twice and doesn't even exist anymore. So you think, oh, wow, that's mm. a pretty big storm. I believe it's up for sale, actually, Deborah. I know um, just recently Dunk Island was up for sale. Um, oh, so a few of us actually considered, oh, Dunk Island, what it would be a great community. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Beautiful. Par that's true paradise. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we might get going so <clears throat> i'm absolutely delighted to be here today to um introduce to you two incredible speakers um one from arizona and one from the gold coast in australia and today is a real well actually this whole month is a really special month because it's dedicated to men's mental health and I'm just going to share a screen with you because at Bliss Spot we're absolutely passionate about it and um, sharing tips and ideas that could really help people with their mental health and particularly men who are we're going to talk about this a little bit more but can traditionally find it a little bit easier a bit more difficult to talk about or to open up or to reach out when they really need that support. So today we're going to honour um, Movember as we have two incredible male uh, guest speakers. And Movember, as most of you would know by now, is an incredible movement to change the face of men's health with an aim to reduce the number of men dying prematurely prematurely by 25%. I mean, that is an absolutely massive number. And Movember states that tragically across the world, one man dies by suicide every minute of every day. I mean, that really gets me in the heart. That's so sad. With males accounting for 75% of all suicides. So Movember is on a mission to turn those statistics around, which is so important. And over... To their credit, over 5 million moustaches later, people all over the world are now taking inspired action to support the men's mental health charity to raise awareness of suicide prevention. So today, as I've already mentioned, we're delighted to have two um, incredible speakers. Yogi Brian is a yoga instructor and a meditation teacher. He, I love Yogi Brian's story and I'm just can't wait for him to share it with you but he created an Instagram account in 2016 with the sole purpose to make fun of yoga <laughs> however now Yogi Brian's mission in life is to inspire people to practice yoga so they can develop a healthy body and a peaceful mind so what an incredible mission and uh, body of work that is he specializes in emotional mastery, self-care, stress relief, and making people laugh, which I also happen to believe is one of the best medicines of all. Yogi Brian noticed that yo the yoga community took their practice way too seriously. I'm an avid um, yoga uh, 
practitioner myself and I know some of our attendees are also so it's just um incredible to see Yogi Brian bringing this humorous and fun aspect into yoga and as a result he's been really inspired to create a space to make people laugh Adrian Hanks, who will be presenting after Yogi Brian, is an incredible psychotherapist, counsellor and holistic coach. Adrian loves to create and deliver real, authentic, life-enhancing services. His services, he, you know, he has an incredible um, body of educational work, support, guide, inspire and even positively challenge people to get more out of their life physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And Adrian has worked in the men's health space for over 25 years, facilitating men's groups, and he has also done some incredible charity work. So we cannot wait to hear from Adrian a little bit later on in the session. So without further ado, I will pass over to Yogi Brian, who is going to lead us with a meditation today. Excellent. Thank you so much, Deborah. Appreciate and I'm honored to be on today. And we'll do a very simple meditation to just allow us to settle, allow us to relax. So wherever you're at, if you're sitting on a chair, you can stay seated on a chair or you can lie down or you can find your favorite meditation cushion. And once you find that place, softly, gently close your eyes. And allow yourself to arrive. Just invite your mind to meet your body. Sometimes when we start a meditation, our minds can be all over the place thinking about yesterday or the day ahead, and that's okay. But just allow your mind to arrive. Invite your mind to meet your body. And bring in your awareness and attention to your breath. And it's your natural breath, nothing to do or control. Just observe your breath. Notice your breath. Noticing the inhale and the exhale. And in just a moment, start to take control of your breath with your mouth closed, breathing in and out through your nose, matching your inhale with your exhale, finding a comfortable, natural, steady, and intuitive breath. Finding a comfortable, natural, steady, and intuitive breath. And you soon start to realize you're relaxing even more and more each and every breath you take. Now bring your awareness to your body and take a scan of your body all the way from the crown of your head to the tips of your toes. Scanning the body, noticing the body and any tension you feel in your body just notice exactly where that tension is. Pinpoint exactly where that tension is. And once you know where that tension is, your mind knows what to do. Your mind automatically knows how to relax that tension. So just allow that tension to release, to dissolve, to fade away into space, each and every breath you take.
And in just a moment, I wonder if you can use that great imagination of yours. And I wonder if you can think of a time where you felt so safe and so secure. A time where you felt so safe and so secure. It could be a time in your childhood or it could be a time recently where maybe it's a make-up, make-believe place. One person I know, her safe place is on the beach with her feet in the sand, looking out on the horizon as the sun, sun is starting to set. Another person I know, his safe place is two miles down in the earth in a bunker all by himself. But where is your safe place? First thing you can think of, go there now. This is your safe place. Safe energy. And now allow that picture to fade away. But stay with the feeling of the safe energy. There's a place in your body you feel this safe energy. Pinpoint exactly where you feel this safe energy. Some people feel it in their heart space. Others feel it in their stomach. Where do you feel this safe energy? First instinct. And once you know exactly where you feel this safe energy, you may start to see a color. It could be any color, it could be multiple colors. Maybe you don't see a color at all, and that's okay. Feel and see this color coming from your body. And now allow this color to float out above your head. The safe energy floating above your head, and it starts to expand all the way from wall to wall, from floor to ceiling. The safe energy, this color starts to expand, and it fills up your entire room with the safe energy. Fills up the entire room, fills up every single cell in your body, every single muscle fiber is full of this safe energy. Feeling so safe, so relaxed, and so secure. Just notice how you feel. And whenever you're ready, you can start to open your eyes and come out of this meditation whenever you like. Taking this feeling with you throughout your day, this safe energy. There you go. Thank you, Yogi Brian. That was absolutely incredible. Yeah, my feeling. I've, it's You're such, welcome. such a safe. I feel very safe and it was beautiful to tap into my favorite color again. And one mm. thing which really stood out for me one thing I love about meditation everybody takes away what they need or it's a different experience you know from the same words but I love the way that you said feel the tension in your body and your mind will know what to do it's like <laughs> we don't have to try or work hard or fix it you know it's like that trust yeah. and faith in ourselves so that was an absolutely beautiful message well today I know um Half an hour will not be enough because you've got so much to share. But I think if we could start with just telling me a little bit about your background, which we've touched upon a little bit, and how you got into this work, because I know it's been a real uh, journey of unfolding and discovery. Yes, real journey. And it keeps, uh, keeps going down the rabbit hole as I keep practicing yoga and practicing meditation. It started... Like you said, as a joke, I created an Instagram back in 2016 just to make fun of yoga because I saw one of my friends posting yoga poses on her kitchen table, on her bed. She was doing a yoga challenge for her studio, her yo local yoga studio. And I was watching her Instagram and I thought this was ridiculous. Like, why are people doing yoga challenges on their kitchen, on their bed? And I thought it was funny. And I thought I could create like a parody yoga account and do yoga on my kitchen and make fun of it. And I did. And it started to 
gained traction, I think within the first week or first month, I had a thousand followers. I was, I was thought I was super famous. I had a thousand followers on Instagram and then it just, I, I grew it more and more just making fun of the practice. And then I was approached to do a yoga challenge on Instagram and I had no clue what I was doing. So I reached out to a yoga instructor on Instagram. She helped me do the challenge together. I would do the, I would do the funny part and make the funny captions and then she would lead the actual yoga asanas. And after that challenge, that challenge was successful. I figured I should go to the yoga studio and practice and learn yoga so I can make fun of it more. And yeah, I went to the yoga studio, started practicing. I started feeling really good in my body. My stress was starting to fade away because I, I suffer with anxiety, depression as well. So that stress started to fade away. My, I started to get healthier, losing some weight. And I figured I'll just sign up for yoga teacher training so I can really learn more yoga so I can make fun of it on Instagram. And it just completely took me like yoga just completely took me down the rabbit hole, down the path. I became a yoga teacher and just everything has just gone exactly how it needed to be. And one of my favorite teachers, his name is Brian Kest, Power Yoga. He said that if you practice yoga, the universe will take care of the rest. So just practice yoga and the universe will take care of the rest for you. And that's been my experience. If I just practice yoga, if I just meditate, if I just do the things that I need to do for my self-care, the universe delivers and it takes care of the rest. So that's, and now I'm here. And now I'm here talking with you, Deborah. So it's, it's been an amazing journey. Yeah, amazing. And um just a beautiful philosophy too, isn't it? About look, it's because it's self-care and um, caring for ourselves, And then the more we care for ourselves, the more things, you know, can flow. So it's just an absolutely beautiful message. So um, we're looking at today, as well as honouring men's mental health, why being your best is actually important. And I guess for you, you really encapsulate that because, as you said, you suffered anxiety and depression, as we all know, or many people probably know, stress is the world's leading disability right now. Anxiety and depression is widespread from our teenagers right through, you know, to the elderly. It's a big issue for the planet right now so why do you think that being your best is important being my best is important because if i'm not my best if i'm not feeling my best or working on myself like then i'm pouring from an empty cup mm -hmm. and how am i going to help other people when i i'm not able to help myself or how am i going to be there for my family if i'm not taking care of my health and i better learn that the hard way you know it's just it's very um it's a balance when you are a meditation guide, a yoga teacher, like I want to give, 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 I want to help everyone. I don't want you to feel bad. I, I want to use all my energy for you. And, you know, I burn myself out that way. And then I, I have to like, you know, the universe, the universe, you know, lets you know, like, Hey, you're sick or like your mind is just too stressed. So that's one thing like I've really been working on. And that's why it's amazing that we're here on this type of webinar. And I can't wait to hear from Adrian, but I've really been working on my masculine energy. You know, I've, been, I've really been working on that masculine energy and, and what is like a healthy masculine energy instead of like a toxic masculine energy, you know, ego and everything like that. I'm going to conquer, or, you know, I'm going to be better than, than everyone that type, which, which I used to play competitive golf. So I had that, you know, masculine, like competitive, like I, I want to win, win, win. And especially like with the yoga meditation now it's like that healthy masculine energy it's like it's okay to feel my feelings and it's okay to have healthy relationships with other men you know and that's something that I've, I've like struggled with just having like healthy relationships with other men that I can confide in and be vulnerable with mm -hmm. you know so it's really like for me the best way I can be healthy is just being true to myself like honoring myself like what are what is my feelings like what am I feeling right now like, what is my truth? Like, should I have spoke up and said something to that other person, like to set a boundary, you know, because that's like, you know, I'm harnessing resentment, you know, or what, what is just, what is my truth right now? What am I feeling? Do I need to take an extra day of rest, you know, instead of helping out and teaching that extra yoga class? Like, what am I really feeling? You know, so it's really coming back to that 
you know, how am I feeling? Like what's in there and just feeling the feelings. And it's okay as a man to feel our feelings. Like it's really okay. You know, because like all throughout my life, especially golf, you have to have your game face on. You can't show anyone your feelings, mm. you know, because like your competitor is going to see you feeling something. And then, you know, they're going to, they're going to take advantage of that, but it's okay, you know, to feel our feelings. And especially with like a safe group of men, friends that you can be, feel safe with. So, yes. That is just the most beautiful message. And I'm going a little bit off um, track here with a, a, something that just popped into my mind. You were saying, because I think this is a big thing with men's mental health, is that they don't reach out or they don't ask for help or they don't feel that they can, because of conditioning and the pressure that society has put on them, that they don't feel that, yeah, they can be vulnerable or say how they really feel because people might take advantage of them. So you were saying, which I think is such a beautiful uh, um, example too, to, uh, as a role model, that you didn't feel like you could speak to men, but now you have a healthy men's friendship group. Do you think that's because men are being taught to compete so they can't develop those friendships? Like what do you think in the past has stopped men from being able to um, form a healthy friendship group and why it's good to do so now? I mean, I think you've touched on it to an extent. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And it's like, like for me, is I just didn't really, you know, I, I grew up pretty much a loner, you know, playing competitive golf. It's like just a single sport. And I really didn't have, you know, many friends growing up just because I was like, just so on point to become a pro golfer. And then uh, like, yeah, for, for me, it's like, I felt like other men, I'm competing with them. You know, I'm just competing with them. And like, if I let down my guard, like they're going to use that against me to get ahead on the competition. You know, but I've, I've learned, especially recently that, you know, there are, there are men out there in, in support groups or groups like that, where you can share and have like a healthy bond with another man like that, that's in their masculine energy. That's that healthy, healthy masculine energy. So yeah, I, I really, for me, I felt it was competition and also, you know, comparison is the killer of joy. I'm always comparing myself with like other men. And it's like, okay, what are they doing? How much money are they making? Or I used to. And that's something that, you know, I try not to compare myself anymore. And there are, you know, there, there are people out there that you can be vulnerable with. And especially like men in groups and certain groups, you know, therapy groups are really good because I, I've like gone through a lot of different therapy, hypnotherapy, like, and with my struggles with anxiety and depression, which I still struggle with, like I'm, I'm learning this stuff from me and then I can share it with other people. So it's like, I'm learning it from me to like feel better so then I can share it. So yeah, that's, that's been my experience with being yeah. able to be vulnerable. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's such a nugget of gold that comparison is a killer of joy. I think we need to do a Yogi Brian um, <laughs> quote on social with that. And that, that's so true. You know, you, you always find people, um, healthier better richer poorer you know there's always everything at every end of the spectrum and it's really settling into your own power and just being happy with who you are and being the best you can be and the reason why we've asked people um why uh we we did a survey a few years ago and we asked people what was the most important thing to them and many people came back with the answer to feel like themselves again. They just said they did not feel like themselves. They felt disconnected. And, you know, you think that would be so easy to be yourself. You think it would be one of the most easiest things in the world to be, yet something that people really struggle with. So that's something we have a, a focus on today. And we asked people, how much would you pay to feel like yourself? People wrote down anything in capital letters, underlined it 10 times. So it's obviously something they felt really passionate about so what would you say is your top tip um to feel like yourself and you know get through the day in the best way possible sure like my my top tip to feel yourself is question like how you're feeling you know like our, our subconscious mind is like google so when we ask our subconscious mind a question depending on what the question is it's going to give us certain answers 
you know, so sometimes we might not know what our true authentic self or like how we can be honest in the present moment. But maybe if we sit there for a little bit, especially for me, maybe if I sit there without anything, no distractions, no phone, no social media, maybe a piece of paper and a pen so I can journal some things. If I just sit there and ask, how am I feeling right now? And then just see what comes up in my body, you know, because our body tells us how we're feeling. See where, where the tension is in our body. And then from there, like, okay, how am I feeling or why am I feeling that tension there? You know, okay. And then why normally asking myself five times the question, okay, so why, why, why? Then normally you get down to like exactly what the cause is, like how to feel your true authentic self, you know, because truth that comes and goes like one day, our truth might be different than the next day. And like, for me to feel like myself, it really, it really comes down to like, how am I feeling in the present moment? Like, okay, I'm with this person. Like, how is this person making me feel like, do I need to set a boundary with this person? Or do I just, just need to express how I feel towards this person? So it's really like truth. Like it, it all comes back to truth for me. And asking the questions to myself, like, how am I feeling right now? Or can I stop scrolling on my phone and just feel a little bit bored and connecting with my body? Because our body tells us, our, bo our body gives us the guide. It tells us how we're feeling. I could not agree more. Um, you know, as a kinesiologist, the, um, which I'm also trained in, that your body is so wise and it tells you everything you need to know. But the problem is we get so busy and our mind's so busy, we don't listen to it um, and we override those signals from our body. So, and I think uh, what I got from you there too was it's not just asking the super question, how superficial question, how am I feeling right now on the go when you're running around? Because you do not get a true reading. And I think sitting still, getting rid of all the distractions. And then I love the way, which I've never heard of this before, saying why five times? Because as you say, the, um, to get into your subconscious, that takes time and you need to go deeper and maybe through a few layers. So what an incredibly powerful free technique that you can use on yourself to get to that, your real truth. So beautiful wisdom. Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today. I could talk to Yogi Brian all day because I'm mm -hmm. absolutely a huge fan of his work and I love it. But now we'll cross over to Adrian. I'm just going to... Unmute you there, Adrian. Oops. There we go. So there we welcome. go. Should be able to hear me. <laughs> yes, we can hear you very well. I know you've already been to a, another function this morning, so busy, busy. Um, but Adrian, please um, tell me a little bit about your background and how you got into this work. Certainly will. Yeah. And just before I do, I just want to thank Yogi Brian, particularly for the meditation, because uh, I was uh, up early this morning and I didn't have time for my meditation. So that was perfect for me <laughs> to have the meditation. So, uh, so thank you. Yeah. And yeah, just a little a bit about myself. Um, where to begin is always a great, great question. Why, why, why and, and where? Uh, so my, my journey really started quite early for me um, at around about the age of 10 or 11. Uh, I had a, a spiritual experience where I actually saw a spirit and I was very fortunate because it got, because it got validated by my headmaster in primary school. And I will say that validation made a difference for me because that had not been validated. I would have closed that down and I would have closed that sort of psychic ability or that uh, ability to see beyond um, in those early days. So my first ever teacher uh, was my, at 10 years old was my, uh, headmaster of primary school and he said something to me when I left primary school to go into high school and he said to me Adrian do not be a follower be a leader and it was the most beautiful gift that a, a young man a young boy could receive at 10 or 11 I think I was like 11 and a half years old and I took that to heart because I, I really loved my headmaster and he was a, a big mentor of mine so I, I've carried that message all through my life that any situation I've been given, where can I take a healthy leadership role in, in that situation um, if it's needed? Uh, because if I'm waiting for other leaders uh, to lead, sometimes I'm waiting a long time to rather step up and become that leader myself. Now, when I talk about leadership, 
I talk about leadership from two perspectives. One is leading myself, and, and uh, certainly Yogi Brian spoke about that, about how to be there for oneself. And now, how can I be there as a leader for others as well? And just a segue into that space was um, um, why I do what I do with men's work is probably a, a good question to ask. Why, 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 why five times? <laughs> I've got that lodged in now, but um, is uh, my parents separated when I was uh, 10 years old. It wasn't a very healthy relationship. And I think somewhere in my subconscious, I'm healing my own self and, and other men through what I experienced as a young, young child with my, my parents separating. And uh, that wasn't sort of a, the most healthy relationship. So I think somewhere in that subconscious, there was this self-healing that needed to be happening for myself around men. Um, and from that space for myself of what I needed, I could then learn to that, then give it to other men as well. So that's probably, you know, that's, that's where it started. Um, my journey was that, that need to heal self around men. Um, although I had positive men, like, you know, my headmaster, Miss Ginjo, I also experienced quite a lot of that, you know, toxic masculinity that uh, uh, Brian alluded to as well. So, so I had a, a mix of both and, you know, it was at times and still am, unfortunately, a little bit toxic just because I haven't mastered everything in my life. You know, it's, it's still a, uh, a journey. It's still work in progress uh, because it's, it's really hard work to tame all that shadow side of our being or the negative side of our being and as many uh, ways of expressing and describing that. So for me, the continuation of the men's work, I've been doing it now for over 25 years, um, sort of um, in an official capacity as a, facil a facilitator, as a, a coach, as a psychotherapist and a counselor as well. And what I get to understand about men, and we spoke about this safety aspect for men, so I want to sort of come off what Brian was sharing about the safety. I know when men step into a safe space, they learn that vulnerability, vulnerability is not weak. I want to share that again. When men step into a safe space, like say a men's space, they get to realize that vulnerability is not weak. And that's a huge big step for many men. Because for many men in that mind space, vulnerability is seen as weak. And as you know, Brian alluded to, and, and what I share is, it's not a weak space. It's one of the most powerful places men can go. For growth, isn't it? Because you can yeah, grow from absolutely. your vulnerability. It's when you're honest with yourself, yeah. you can make that change, um, particularly for areas of your life are not working by exploring your vulnerabilities, you can grow, th you can grow through anything if you put your mind to it. And I just I think safe spaces are really important. So we're realizing now with the pandemic and how unstable the world is, people are looking for safe spaces. And that's why psychological safety at work is really important. And it's about creating safe spaces at work so people can go and explore things if they need to, to be their best in all areas of their life, not only their career, but um, with their families and also with their health. So that's the beautiful work that both of you do, you know, creating those beautiful safe spaces or teaching people how to create safe spaces so that people can make that positive change and growth and feel stable when everything around us in the outside world is fairly unstable at the minute. So beautiful work. Well, that is just uh, so inspiring. And why do you feel that being your best is important? Deep down for me, it's about learning to have self-love. I think it's one of the most important and most valuable things as human beings we can do is get to that space of absolute self-love so for me that's why it's important so i can actually really truly honestly tell myself when i look in the mirror that adrian i love you and if we can get to that space as human beings i think that's probably one of the most important factors of being human is to love ourselves because if i love myself it means i can be in my peak performance physically emotionally mentally spiritually, vocationally, intimately, sexually, creatively, and all those other aspects of life. And when I'm in that space, I can then share that energy with others. I can inspire others to do the same as well. So we can inspire by being our best. And as we know, inspiration is one of the best ways to teach. One of the best ways to teach. Absolutely. And I think too, with self-love, that's a massive topic at the moment. 
Um, but people might feel that they do love themselves, you know, on the surface. And that's why I think it's asking those five questions to get to the bottom because underneath all anger, sadness, fear, um, all of those times in our life where we do feel unstable, often it is driven from that um, position of feeling that we're not good enough. So I guess it's working with ourselves, developing that kind, wise voice to say that even though we're not perfect, and I just have to honour you, Adrian, because I think you are authentic and you're really walking your talk. You got up here today and you said, um, I, I'm not perfect. I don't know it all. I still struggle sometimes. So I think gone are those days when people are looking for gurus or perfect people that share wisdom. And we all know that when you look into a person's life, we've all got our strengths and our weaknesses the things that we struggle with the areas that we want to grow and you're saying you're giving everybody permission to say that's okay and you've given yourself permission to say that is okay but you do have wisdom to share as well because of all the experiences you've had all your study your academic study as also as well as life experiences and that's really being the best that we can be uh, while being real and honest so Thank you for being very authentic with us today. That's really modeling what the work that you're actually speaking about, which I think is super powerful. And so what do you feel um, is some of the best ways to actually be at your best and to feel like yourself again? Yeah, well, a little bit of uh, sharing from, uh, from what Yogi Brian was sharing too. And that question of, um, and I've actually written a book on where am I right now? So that was a perfect, uh, perfect example from Yogi Brian there. And it's about asking that question, you know, where am I right now physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually? And what I share with people in that space is if you actually set your watch on the hour, every hour to go beep, beep, you can bring yourself into presence for one or two minutes every hour, which for some people is a lot. <laughs> you know, just being present for two minutes in an hour is a lot for some people. But if you, if you can learn some techniques to help you to become present, and one of them is meditation. One, you know, one way is yoga. Many, many ways. And I've been meditating myself for um, over thirty years now, and it's uh, it's my go-to safe place. And I think that important thing of finding that safety, finding some resources to help one to be in that space is really, really important. And I will say, if you can have three three go-to resources or tools to use in any moment, you, you don't have to think about it. And it could be meditation. Um, it could be go for a run. It could be go and have a yell. It could be um, listen to some music. It could be to dance. But if we can get our resources together and use our inner resources and know exactly what they are, and unfortunately for most men, they don't have resources. Deborah, they just don't mm. know what to do. They don't have their first aid kit. Mm. So the first thing that, that I share with them is go and get your first aid kit. So that like you have a toolbox. Yeah, go and have something that you can grab in a nanosecond that you don't have to think about because the mind isn't going to be present if you're, if you're flustered or if you're angry, if you're enraged. But if you can learn to have something there that you've learned to bring in at any given moment, I find that it certainly helps me. And I've got a few resources and things I've created that I share with men in that space. Uh, and one of them is, is what I call my power name. So I'd just like to share that for those watching in and men and women can use this, by the way, is, and I call it that future potential self. It's a one I want to grow into. And I, so my future potential self that I use for myself to bring myself in is Grand Master Adrian. I don't know, it sounds a bit grandiose. It, used to, be right. ma it used to be <laughs> Master Adrian. And then I had grandchildren. And a good friend of mine said, why don't you go from Master Adrian to Grand Master Adrian because you've got grandkids. And for a while, yeah. it was really tough because my... My vulnerability didn't want to go there because who am I to call myself a grandmaster? So I chose a name that I knew I would struggle to fit into so that I would stretch myself to grow. And that's the important part. We have to keep stretching ourselves to grow in whatever capacity. So by giving my name a bit of a, a stretchy name, Grand Master Adrian, I'm slowly learning and continuing to learn to step into that because I know when, um, when I'm in my Grand Master presence energy, I'm in my absolute peak performance, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and all those other things I mentioned, which means then I share that energy out with others. So that's a key resource for me, is to find that power name that is teaching me to become more than I am. Because we, because we don't stop growing. 
that's the reality. If we stop growing, we atrophy and we, we get stuck. So for me, it's about continual growth, continual transformation is probably the most important thing for all of us men and women. And I think when you feel stuck, you don't feel like yourself. You feel stuck and frustrated. Okay. And, yeah. uh, and you know, when we give ourselves permission to grow and flow, it feels good because we want to grow. We want to grow from that tiny little acorn into that beautiful oak tree. And that's a, a continu- you know, constant journey of growth. And another thing that you said, and also Yogi Brian's spoken about, is our feelings and mastering our feelings. Because for men, if they haven't been given permission to feel, which is quite often the case. It's been conditioned out of them to always keep that stiff up, look in control, be strong at all times. And then they're conflicted because they have all these feelings going on inside. And then that's when people will, rather than deal with those feelings, that's when they'll act out by having the midlife crisis or worst case scenario by being violent or, you know, at the very least hurting other people because they're not aware of how to deal with their feelings and to express them in healthy, positive ways or to process them in healthy, positive ways. So it's a really important work. And, you know, sadly, if people had been able to deal, if people can deal with their feelings, or I guess this is in the positive of the direction in the way that we can go, perhaps that suicide rate will decrease because yeah. obviously suicide is when we're feeling at a very heightened, anxious state that we can't cope Whereas what you're both suggesting is that when we have these coping mechanisms, um, we can return to our calm and stable centre again and keep going forward with hope and not feeling like we don't have any hope or there's no way out. So absolutely beautiful and um, important work. So um, I'm just so grateful to have you both here today and we are going to have a question question time so this is a fantastic opportunity for the audience to write down some questions just um, I'll just give you a few moments to put those together and then in the meantime I'm just going to share with you a little bit more about um, the work that Adrian and Yogi Brian both share on Blissbot it's beautiful life enhancing work So um, Yogi Brian has an incredible range of meditations that are designed to support you to get through any challenges uh, in what can seem like an overly busy and stressful world. And I think many of us can relate to that, just how busy and stressful life can be. But Relax with uh, Yogi Brian is a beautiful uh, series of meditations designed to support for all different sorts of things. Sleep, it'll help with your relationships, your relationship with yourself and your relationship with others. So we're absolutely delighted to be offering that on Blissbot. And Adrian has developed, he developed this last year in line with one of our incredible partners, uh, Go One a men's health course um, specifically to help men in uh, the workplace, but also with uh, with their personal life. Um, And what Adrian does is he looks at health and happiness from all angles, which I think is really important because people struggle with things in different ways. It could be physically, it could be um, mentally, it could be emotionally. So Adrian really walks his talk. He practices living well, being his best in all those areas. And he shares um, so many insightful tips and wisdoms in his very specific men's health course. So we're delighted and honored to have that as part of our Blissbot offering as well. And uh, for many of you who've been following us on this series of events, you would know that um, Blissbot is an online wellbeing platform designed to support your mental and emotional health. Um, we have a range of incredible experts such as Yogi Brian and Adrian from all over the world that contribute their wisdom to Blissbot to really help people to grow and to thrive and not to remain stuck in any challenges that they might be facing. We all know that life's challenges are inevitable, but it's how we get through them that makes all the difference. And with this range of content, if we put all the content together and put a value on it, it would be worth over $10,000. However, we want to really meet people where they're at the moment 
and to really help them take their well-being to the next level. So that's why we don't charge $10,000 or not even $1,000 for this incredible range of content, but you can get all um, access to everything on Blissbot for an entire year for just $149. And so Blissbot is like Netflix in a sense in that we have a whole range of educational um, material, meditations, podcasts, and of course, online courses that are designed to particularly support your well-being and give you those tips and tools that we need to get us through those stuck and challenging times. And so we could ask ourselves a question, what is our health and well-being worth? It is the most valuable and important thing you will ever own. And being the best that you can be and having access to all the support and resources you need to take your health and well-being is part of that self-care and that self-love journey. And we're offering two today um, on top of the annual men membership for $149 over our um, $400 worth of resources. I believe that Adrian has something in that bundle as well. So we've put together a very special care package as a bonus offer. And um, you'll get that as part of your Blisspot membership that will be sent to you. So if you gain to gain full access to everything in Blisspot for an entire year, plus the bonus bundle, if you sign up today, we will send that to you. And next week, we're absolutely delighted to be um, interviewing Olivia Kispert. Olivia is an incredible um, transpersonal psychologist and mindfulness and meditation teacher. She supports men and women in, um, in creating both relationship and online business success by focusing on what is true, real and deeply fulfilling while clearing past blockages and trauma. Olivia creates deeply insightful meditations that are introspective, transformative and release anxiety and overthinking. She goes between the US and Costa Rica and I've actually interviewed her from a absolutely spectacularly glamorous treehouse in Costa Rica once. It was incredible with flowing white curtains and very, very magical. And she does absolutely transformational, life-changing work. It's beautiful. She'll be joined by Anna Hollop, who is our peace educate, educator and forgiveness counsellor. Anna was honoured with the Champion of Forgiveness Award from the Worldwide Forgiveness Alliance in 2018. And she has dedicated over 25 years uh, to researching the roots of conflict on both personal and interper inter interpersonal international levels and she's focused on finding that path to peace so both of them do absolutely incredible work and I'll be I'm so looking forward to interviewing them next week so we might just cross back to our speakers and Chris who is supporting us tirelessly in the background doing his incredible tech support um, Chris is on the leadership team from Blissbot and Chris do we have any questions for today yeah, we do. Um, and a, and a, another thanks to both uh, Yogi Brian and, and Adrian uh, Hanks taking a lot um, away with me with, uh, with what, what they've been talking about there. So thank you. Um, yeah, we've got, uh, thank you, Ingrid, for your questions. We've got two, one each for Yogi Brian and one for Adrian. So the first one for Yogi Brian is, um, if someone feels they're so far from their authentic self, what would you recommend be the first step to take to get back on track. Sure, thank you, Ingrid, for that question. And you mentioned that you're far, far from your authentic self. So I would maybe, you know, start with, you know, because you use those words far, you know, how far are you away from your authentic self? Maybe draw a diagram and where you are compared, compared to where you want to be. And like we were talking about how Adrian was talking about you know, asking yourself that question, like, who am I, you know, and then asking it five times, who am I answer it? Who am I answer it and be completely honest with what it comes up, you know, because maybe who you are is not what other people want you to be. And that's okay. Just be honest to yourself. Take some time in a quiet place alone, pen and paper. Who am I? Maybe draw that diagram of how far are you from your authentic self? 
and then just take some baby steps along the way to get there. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. You know, I, I like to do that. I like to just, I want everything to happen right now, you know, and it, and it takes time. You know, if you got far from your authentic self, it's going to be t- taking time to get back there. So yeah, ask yourself those questions, be hundred percent honest. That's, that's, that's all I got there. That's beautiful and so simple, but really powerful. I often find some of the best techniques are maybe not easy. They, they'll be simple. They take a uh, focus and commitment and you've got to stay with it. Sometimes the processes are uncomfortable, but the other at the other side, you usually get the most incredible re, uh, rewards. So beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, Yogi Brian. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for that question, Ingrid. Thank you. Um, for Adrian, um, Again, thanks again, Ingrid, for your, your question there. Um, if someone is in a place where they don't have self-love, again, what would be the first step to seek self-love from within? Great question. Thanks, Ingrid. For, for me, it will be getting really clear on what aspect of myself is it that I do not love. Because there's many aspects to our being, and it might be that there is self-love for some aspects of our being, and there might be some lack of self-love in others. So I would, um, I, I like to um, get really clear on what I'm telling myself. So I would ask that question, well, where, what is it about me that I don't love right now? Is it physical? Is it emotional? Is it my attitude? Is it my beliefs? Is it the way I'm in relationship? Is What is that aspect that, I, that there isn't love? because I'm sure it's not the total aspect of who we are completely that we actually dislike or or don't love. It would just be a a part of ourselves that's not loved and that can then overshadow all those aspects of where I do love myself. So I'd probably do both. I'd find out where I don't love myself and then I'd write a list of where I actually do love myself and then I'd go and find somebody to work with or work by myself to heal that aspect of the part that I do not love. So I, I would identify it. That would be my first, my first move. Oh, I love that technique. I love personal development because I've been in doing this work for, you know, 30 years and I've never heard that exact, exact technique either. So that is beautiful. And I think what I love about that, it's keeping things into perspective because the mind can totally cat- catastrophize and we can think, oh, and as you say, we, we probably don't necessarily not love all of ourselves. You know, there's probably so many great things, but it's one little aspect that we might choose to be working on. So what a great tool and technique for keeping things into perspective and um, being able to really tap into that self-love within. So fantastic. So and we have uh, one final question from Robin. Um, perhaps we could have... Um answers from both Yogi Brian and Adrian on this one. Um, How do you avoid fatigue when you continue to improve, but don't seem to achieve the change and transformation to be happy again? Who wants to go first on that one? Adrian? I'm I'm happy to. Uh, So fatigue can be on many levels. um, And if we get into that sort of uh, more esoteric space about the condition of the human being, we can have physical fatigue. Yeah, and that could be just, you know, something around the thyroid or another part of the physical body. But it also can be, if you like, in the chi energy body or the, the etheric body energy, where people can get really tired because they're simply not looking after themselves from an energy perspective. So once again, I'd be evaluating where that um, fatigue is coming from. Is it a physical fatigue uh, primarily, or is it an energy fatigue? It could be the wrong diet. It could be the there's not enough practice of relaxation and yoga and meditation. So I would be putting the microscope on on myself and saying, why am I feeling that fatigue right now? And doing that question again, and then taking measures to overcome that fatigue. And it could be simply just changing your sleep pattern. So it's about, once again, it's about identifying because it's it's quite generic to say one is um, fatigue. So put the spotlight on it, find out exactly where that fatigue is coming from. In addition to that too, Adrian, I could have this wrong, so please correct me if I haven't quite read the question correctly, but is it that Robin was saying that, because I think we can all relate to this, that we're working on ourselves, we're doing all the right things, we're doing our meditation, we're 
but we still are fatigued because we don't feel that we're, um, you know, getting in better or where we'd like to be. Or the, I, is, that, is that true, Robin, that you're maybe talking about that type of fatigue as well? I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, so, that's, so, that, so I would suggest probably like that's the, the, the fatigue of disappointment because disappointment can be really tiring. So mm. if we're not feeling that we're going forward in life, if we feel like we're atrophying or, or not growing, that mind talk can be really tiring, can be really fatiguing because I'm not believing that what I'm seeing is real. So it's, it's about finding that reality check for myself and doing the checks and measures. And this is why I love journaling. I, I journal, I've actually created a, a, a journal that I work with every single evening and it's got 10 life aspects and I check out every single evening where was I today in those aspects of life and I give myself a bit of a measure and I can see where I'm not living my life to the full and I can see where I've got some self-doubt or some self-talk just not allowing myself to do that growth because a lot of it's around the self-talk and that's really fatiguing really tiring when we're not giving ourselves positive messages and when we're giving ourselves I'm not growing messages so it's about checking the, the psychological mind about what we're telling ourselves, I would suggest, in this situation. And that's beautiful, too, because what the word I got out of that, too, was allowing, allowing a bit more and not sort of criticising ourselves along the journey and trusting that things are unfolding and we're putting out the good intentions and we're doing the work. And, yeah, anyway, well, amazing. So let's cross over to Yogi Brian now. Thank you. Amazing, Adrian. So on point with, with all that. And uh, yeah, I, I, I feel this question, you know, how to avoid fatigue when you continue to improve. And, you know, for me, it comes back to like patience. Like it really, I, I have on my fridge, I was just looking at it. It says genius is eternal patience. And it was Michelangelo wrote that, I believe. And it's just been something I've been like looking at, you know, daily, really just kind of getting in my subconscious mind, you know, because, uh, when I really see that I'm improving, it's like, I'm, I'm, that's when I'm like teaching someone brand new when I first started. And I'm like, wow, I've come, come a long way with like what I've been trying to learn, like just on my journey to improve. Like I have come a long way, you know, teaching someone else that's just beginning, like just helping them out. So it really is just patience for me, like giving that space to grow, just like, just like planting that seed, just giving a little space to grow and just being a little bit patient. So hope that helps Robin. Oh, I love this. this is, <laughs> both of you are so, you know, just nuggets of wisdom everywhere. That's so beautiful because we often don't give ourselves the space. We're pushing, we're wanting to grow, but it's that allowing, as Adrian said, and just, yeah, planting the seeds, putting one foot in front of the other, you know, making those life enhancing decisions for ourselves, but then relaxing and giving ourselves space. So that's just absolutely beautiful and one thing I've learned too because we are impatient and the world's gone heavily into instant gratification and social media only exemplifies all of that and I think the thing is that sometimes things aren't in our time frame they're in a different time frame but it is actually the right time frame and just trusting that as well so absolutely beautiful work so well, I think we're nearly to, to the end of our session for today. I think week five has been absolutely beyond awesome, honouring men's mental health, very, very important, um, encouraging men to be themselves vulnerable and authentic. And our speakers have shared with us how they actually practice that in their own journeys and they help other men on their journeys, not only men, but uh, that's a big part of their work as well. So we've been absolutely delighted to have you here today. And thank you so much for your time um, and giving up your day in various parts of the world. Thank you to the fantastic audience uh, for being with us and for the very relevant and on point questions for today. And thank you to, to Chris Walters for the incredible behind the scenes work in bringing this all together and ensuring the event runs smoothly. Thank you, everybody. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week at the same time. Okay, bye now. Thank you.